as of the time of this recording, it is April the 9th, 2024. And yesterday was April the 8th, 2024, the day of the solar eclipse. And you will never believe what happened. Stay tuned. The Dr. Matters podcast starts right now. Welcome to the Doctrine Matters Podcast, a tool to help believers rediscover true biblical doctrine and to help them understand and live out their faith in their homes, in their churches, and in their communities. Thank you for listening to this episode. Let's get right to it. Belly Deo Gloria. Well, welcome everybody to this episode of the Doctrine Matters podcast. And as mentioned in the intro, it is one day after the April the 8th solar eclipse that spanned across much of the nation, whether it was 20% coverage or 100% coverage of this full uh, or this solar eclipse, I should say. And so many things were told would happen on this day. There were many Bible teachers that would tell us that this is the end of the world. This is when Christ is going to return. This is a sign of Jonah. This is, this is, uh, all of this is going through Nineveh. It's going through little Egypt. You better get ready because this is it. X is marking the spot. God has judged America and he is about to return. And if he's not about to return now, some said it was ushering in the seven years of tribulation. Which again, it was all surrounding eschatology, the study of end times. And this is coming from really a hyper dispensational, premillennial view of eschatology or the last days, is essentially what we're talking about. Is the things that will happen when Christ returns, the new heavens and the new earth, all of those things. So there was a lot of prophecy, quote unquote prophecy. And it made a lot of people fear. A lot of people were doubting. A lot of people were worrying. A lot of people were afraid that this truly was the end of the world. And I can tell you, though, there was something that happened yesterday, and many people don't even believe it. But what happened yesterday was Psalm 19, verse 1. The glory of God was put on display. We didn't see Anybody rising up out of their clothes and leaving their clothes behind and everything behind as they are raptured up to heaven. We didn't see Christ return. We didn't hear trumpets blow. We didn't see a bunch of crazy things. We didn't see a bunch of uh, of, of self-service down. We didn't see internet go out. We didn't see or hear of gas stations running out of gas. Our debit card still worked. The grocery stores were still open. And all of this speculation quote unquote prophecy was directed right towards this solar eclipse. And none of that happened. Sure. There were some traffic jams after the eclipse was over. Everybody trying to get on the major interstates and get out back to their hometowns. And that was expected, but traffic is nothing new. If you've ever been in a big city like Nashville or um, uh, Los Angeles, you know that traffic is an everyday occurrence there. So, uh, so so we, some people saw some traffic. That's about the extent of what happened other than the greatest thing that happened. And again, that is Psalm 19, chapter 1. Let me read this to you. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. I want you to think about this for a minute. Millions and millions of people looked straight up yesterday. You can tell many of them look straight up now because they all have red faces because the sun gave them a little sunburn. <laughs> but everybody, so many people across America and wherever this eclipse hit across the world, they looked up. They were looking straight up at the sky above. And what they were seeing, whether they believe it or not, was the handiwork of God. This was the glory of God on full display. So this was Psalm 19.1 happening right before our eyes yesterday. As so many people looked upward at the skies, we were captivated by this event. And if you were in totality, 
then I can tell you, you probably experienced a pretty cool thing. I'm 40 years old. That was my first time ever being in a, a situation where I was actually in the, the line of or path of totality, they said, to where we had about two minutes of where the moon was in front of the sun. And it, it was just so interesting, so interesting that everybody's looking up. There's not a band to get people ready. There's not a band to stir people's emotions and get them excited and get them hyper and, or hyped up. Um, there wasn't a hype man anywhere. There wasn't anything loud and brash about what was going on yesterday. But millions of faces looking up at the handiwork of God. And from my perspective, I just, I just want to tell you my perspective is, first of all, I didn't believe all the biblical prophecy that was coming out about this being in the end of the world. I, I didn't believe that anyway, so I didn't fear and I didn't have concerns or questions or doubts concerning that. So I was able to sit there with my family. By God's grace, my kids that work were off work. Kids were out of school and able to stay out of school. And uh, my wife and I were at home with our kids. So we were able to, to sit in our front yard and view this together. And we just got to hang out and we just watched the moon come closer and closer f over the sun and, and the sun go less and less. And then finally, when totality hit, we experienced a temperature drop, uh, just a quietness around us. We got to see the cone or the, the ring, whatever you call it. We got to see the diamond ring, they call it. It's got a different name than that. Uh, we got to see all of these things and witness all of these things. And it was such a beautiful thing to think about so many people gazing upwards and re whether they believe it or not we're gazing at the just handiwork and glory of god because this the scripture says the heavens declare the glory of god so when we think of the word heavens many of us are going to think of things that we can't see way above the sky places we've never seen never uh have, have seen in our lifetime never will unless we're christians and we die and go to those places right but when we think of the heavens here we can look at the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. And yes, you could see some planets yesterday. Uh, we, could, we can look at these things, and those things in and of themselves are part of the heavens declaring the glory of God. This psalm goes on to talk about animals, uh, the sun returning where it goes, talks about the sun uh, rising and setting. It, it, and we look at these things on a daily basis, and we take it for granted. And many people took it for granted yesterday because they don't realize that that was the glory of God on display. And they just think it was some sort of phenomenon and, and, and astro astronomical thing that is just really cool that came across our area. But I can tell you, it was more than just a really cool thing. And I can also tell you this. Every single day that God gives us the ability to be on this earth, we take things for granted. God is declaring his glory through so many things, and we miss it. We get tied up in uh, all of our little things that we do, all of the little uh, jobs and, 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 and uh, side hustles and projects and uh, our kids' lives and all of these things that we do. We get into this mundane kind of routine rut that we miss the glory of God all around us. As I'm sitting here, there's actually... Um, a highway out the window over there. And then on the other side of that highway is a huge wheat field. And if you've ever seen a wheat field and it's green and it's beautiful, you know that this is when it's golden and when it's in its stage, it's hidden now and it's green. It's just such a, such a beautiful thing. I wish I could show you. Uh, but back behind that are trees and they're blooming. They're becoming green. The leaves are changing and uh, it's just a, a beautiful scene. I woke up this morning and it was raining. I didn't see the sun, but I saw the clouds. I saw the rain. I saw all of these things. And I, even then, I took it for granted. I saw this great thing yesterday in the solar eclipse, but I look out my window and see these other great things that God does on a, on a daily basis, and I miss it. And you miss it. We all miss it. When we look at a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset. We may say, oh, God is good and he's kind and he is those things, but he's, he's not only good and kind, he's putting his glory on display through his creation. And we, I, we, I, 
I need to get back to simple things. We get our heads down and we get focused on things and we press on and press through and work hard. And those are good things. But there's an old saying, wake up and smell the roses. We've got roses at our house. My wife will call me out of the office sometimes and she'll say, hey, come smell these roses. And it's just a beautiful smell, just fills the air, fills my, fills my nostrils with beauty. And even that is the glory of God being put on display. Because Romans 1 tells us, and I use this scripture a lot, I feel like, but it, it fits here, is that no one is without excuse that there is a God because his creation is speaking. That his invisible attributes, this creation that we see around us, is just screaming the glory of God. Yet we take it for granted. But when some whack o, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm using that loosely. I'm trying to be nice. But when some wacko comes on your YouTube or your Facebook and and declares that this is the end of the world, and he's got 15 reasons why, and he's got 75 scriptures to try to back up why he believes this is the time that Christ will return. Judgment is here. The world is over. We give so much credence to that. We put so much of our time and energy and our faith in listening to what people say instead of trusting what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do. When we just say, you know what? If he returns, he returns. Now, one thing that you do need to know is that when he does return, you need to be ready. You need to be saved. You need to have repented of your sin and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is to turn from your sin, to change your mind on your sin, turn to Christ, put your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of him and him alone. So when he does return, if he would have returned yesterday at the full eclipse or the solar eclipse, then he would have been just in doing so. But he was gracious in letting us all live another day. So we can think, well, He didn't come yesterday, but you can bet this, he's coming soon. There is a day where he will crack that sky wide open, and it may not be during a full or or solar or lunar eclipse or anything. It may be just on a day where you're going about your business and you have failed to look up and worship God or even know God, and he'll crack that sky open and he's coming and he's returning. And if you're not ready, then you have everything to fear. You You don't have to fear eclipses. You don't have to fear false pastors and false prophets on the internet telling you it's the end of the world. You have to fear because if you don't know Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. Because we believe, I believe and teach that hell is a real place where all of those who have not turned from their sin and believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they will go to hell for eternity. There's no getting out. There's no purgatory. There's nobody that can spring you out. There's no money you can pay to get you out of purgatory because purgatory is a false doctrine that people even teach. You're there for eternity. So that's what you need to fear if you don't know Christ. But if you do know Christ, you have no reason to fear at all because you belong to him and he knows you by name. He called you. He drew you. The Father drew you, and through Christ, you repented and believed and have been set free from uh, bondage and weight of sin, and you have a freedom in Christ. So you don't have to listen to these people on YouTube tell you that the world is ending. You can trust Christ. If he comes back, he comes back. Praise God. If he doesn't, we got work to do. More people need to hear the gospel. More people need to be saved. There's a lot of things that have to happen. People need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So two things that I wanted to say on this. First of all, actually three. First one, just reiterating how awesome and amazing the totality was. I hope you got to experience it. If you've never experienced totality, I hope God blesses you with that opportunity at some point. All eyes fixed on the glory of God. Some not even realizing it. But my family realized that that it was the glory of God being put on full display for us. So that's one thing, just how awesome and great that was. It was just God himself doing that. Second of all, do not fear man and what they say. Fear God. Fear not knowing God. And even if you do know God, you have to have a fear of God, a healthy, reverent respect for him knowing how powerful and awesome 
and majestic he is and how much of a worm you are and I am. So we should have a healthy respect and fear of God as a believer. But if you don't know God through Christ Jesus, you have more reason to fear a trembling and awful fear because on the day of judgment, you will be separated from God for eternity and you will go to hell. So I beg you and implore you, repent of your sin and believe on the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the third thing that I would just say is if you're a believer, let's stop neglecting and overlooking the glory of God being put on display on a daily basis. We can see it in the trees. We can see it in the sun, the sunsets, the stars, the moon. We can see it in animals. We can see it in all of these things. So take time to look up. And as I mentioned earlier, smell those roses. Look around at creation and thank God for what he's done. And thank God that he saved you. And thank God that we don't have to listen to false prophets who stir us to fear. But we fear the one true, holy, living God. I hope you enjoyed the eclipse. If you were in totality or have ever been in totality, I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear what you thought about the eclipse. So drop a comment there, and uh, I'd love to hear your experience. I'd love to hear what you think now post-false prophets prophecies that have gone out. I'd love to hear all that. And if you would, if you don't mind, just click subscribe. helps the algorithm. goes out. But if not, I'm okay with that too. I don't do that for me. I don't do this for me. I do this to help you, uh, help encourage you, and to help you think. Um, and uh, do it for the glory of God. And I, I praise him for the opportunity. So thank you for listening to this episode, post-eclipse uh, episode of the Doctrine Matters podcast. Until next time, God bless.